Welcome to Die Trying. Arr! I'm Patty Norton. I'm Michael Hand. What you doing? Today, I'm making a pirate box. A pirate box. Pirate box. Pirate box. Uh, I haven't heard, I just learned about these actually. Uh, and it just happens that version 1.0 of the pirate box came out recently, so I thought we would show it off. So, pirate boxes are a way to anonymously file share and communicate with people that are in your proximity. And because we love to build Raspberry <laughs> Pi projects. Raspberry Pi. Yes. Throw it in there. And a battery. So this is basically a Wi-Fi access point that isn't connected to the internet, but people can connect to and it has a centralized storage. So if you were a dissident group in China getting ready to throw down in the wake of the 25th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square, uh, rebellion, you could use a pirate box to communicate information or exchange files without being on the big bad internet where all of the, you know, crazy overlord spies and NSA are watching your every move. Yeah, for if you're running an event and you right. want people to upload pictures, say, to it, you could set it up and say, connect to this and upload your pictures. And that's, oh, that's another really cool. option that you can do. Or you could take it to the food court with a bunch of your friends and exchange music. Legally owned music you have the right yeah, to exchange your, to. Your sweet demo tapes. Sweet demo tapes. So we have this running on a Raspberry Pi, and then I also have it running on a TP-Link router. This thing is so cool. So basically, it's your, it's made to plug in one of right. your USB 4G, 3G modems, and then it has a battery built in, and then it makes it into a Wi-Fi access point. So at this point, we're looking at maybe four to five hours of sustained battery life off of this. I didn't realize they still made these. They still make them, and it's cheap. It's $35 for this built-in solution. That's awesome. The last one of these I bought was like 125 bucks. <laughs> then the MiFi showed up, and you didn't need to buy one of these anymore. So let's go in and show how to set up one of these, because okay. I think this performance is a little bit better and it's way easier. So we'll show this first. So I guess first place we go to is piratebox.de. Yes, this is where all the files are. In this case, we're using the TP-Link MR3040. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said, 30 or $35 on it's Amazon. faster than the 3020. Real cheap. So you, beyond that, you need a USB drive and then the ethernet cable that comes with the router. So like I said, this is really simple. All you need to do is download the Pirate Box like generic installer, uh -huh. extract that, put it on the USB drive, and then you download the correct firmware for the router that you're using. So there was specific firmware for our MR3040. Uh, Ta-da! So you download that and then you log into the router. 192.168.1.1. In this case, yes, it depends on what your router right. is, but in this case it was 1.1 did it. So logged into that, went to the firmware options, uploaded the custom firmware, mm -hmm. and then waited. So you wanna make sure that your USB drive is in there when it's starting to restart. Okay. And a lot of nothing happens for a while, and then after like 10 to 15 minutes, you have a working pirate box. <laughs> it's a little, uh, Scary for a minute, I guess. 15 minutes, long time to install firmware and reboot your router. Yeah, you might think you bricked it, but you didn't, maybe. Uh, but the website's very yeah. clear saying that it's gonna take a while. So just be patient, just or be patient. Just, just hope. Now that my patience <laughs> is over, so how do I get in? Once it's restarted, all you need to do is connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot, which... Pirate box dash share freely. Yeah, it's an open hotspot. And you can change that to like, you know. Anything you want. Got it. I um, like the, the default. And what do I type in, pirate box? Uh, at this point, you can go to any website. So you can go to google.com if you'd like. And <gasps> then pirate box. Pirate box. So once you're there, um, so we have most things up and running at this point. So you can start chatting on the left here. Uh, you can let the mayhem begin, yes. Or on the right, you can see upload or browse if you want to do that, but you can choose anything you want to upload to. TDR buyer's guide. Okay. Because yeah, then you're looking for a Cummins diesel. This is so cool. And then I hit the browse button. <gasps> yeah, in the browse, you can see all the things that are already on there. Hey. I don't know how that got What's there. What's wrong with my <laughs> truck? I put it there. Okay. <laughs> I really like the part down at the bottom. The pirate box is designed to be safe and secure. No logins are required. No user data is logged. The system is purposely yeah. not connected to the internet in order to prevent tracking and preserve user piracy. It's real cool. Yeah. 
So at this point, <laughs> the pirate box is pretty much working. Um, right. There are a few things you can do, like you can add an admin password, which probably is a good idea. You can enable forums mm -hmm. if you want to do that. Um, also, DLNA streaming is an option. Uh, can't get that to work, oh. but for the most part, it's good to go now. It was actually kind of fun. Um, you said the TP-Link was faster than the Raspberry Pi. Should we talk about the Raspberry Pi? Actually, we should probably take a moment to thank uh, audiblepodcast.com slash DIY. That's our sponsor. If you're into uh, American history, to get close to July 4th, I really recommend Rise to Rebellion, a novel of the American Revolution written by Jeff Shara. Uh, he's the son of the man that wrote the, the book Gettysburg, from which the movie was made. A fantastic inside look. And basically, how a pissed off brewer had a large part of fermenting uh, the American Revolution. I'm talking about Sam Adams. Aww. Dude was angry. I like the, the double use of fermenting. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, thanks to our sponsor, audiblepodcast.com slash DIY. Cat box. Yeah, so showed off in the, cleaning the sense. Recommended, uh, recommended installation, which is very easy and I do recommend it, but we love Raspberry Pis. <laughs> and I like this box, which surprisingly, it still works. So the Raspberry, Raspberry Pi was a little bit harder to set up, but it also is very much following the instructions on the website, just they leave out a few things. So first, what you need to do is install Raspbian Wheezy, okay. which is just a base like Linux install that lots of people have on the Raspberry Pis anyway. Once you do that, there's a bunch of packages that you need to get. So you need to get light HTTPD, you need... Did you actually manually sudo apt-get all of that I stuff? I did, but you can just paste into a, a bash <laughs> file. So... Sudo apt-get update, sudo apt-get dash y install yeah, light pd. So, so this is, I mean, this is, a, this is a classic get your terminal window on and type a lot installation. Yeah, and this, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi, don't do it this way, but you're just SSHing <laughs> into the Raspberry Pi and you're uh, doing these commands. So everything in the instructions is great up until it says you're done, pretty much. Uh -huh. But the problem with the instructions, at least the ones that I was following for the manual install, because there isn't a image released yet for the 1.0 right. Raspberry release, uh, up until the instructions are done, there's no Wi-Fi access point. No so funny. one further step that you need to do is you need to install host, a host APD. Host AP Daemon, I think it's what it's called. <laughs> so this is very much dependent on the kind of wireless dongle that you have for your Raspberry Pi. Because remember, Raspberry Pis are inexpensive, but they don't include any form of wireless networking. Yes, that's very true. Yeah, basically this is a, you know, a, US, a wireless a USB Wi-Fi dongle that we bought off Amazon. Mm -hmm. So to get the host APD up and running, there's a nice little uh, article on eLinux. If all this sounds kind of frightening, um, you know, you can either go with the TP link or wait until they actually create a boot image specifically for the Raspberry Pi. That should make it a little bit easier. Right. But if you're just looking, you don't have any hardware, mm -hmm. I would definitely go with the TP link version right. because it's so easy. It has the built-in battery. You don't need the external battery. So it ends up being cheaper than the Raspberry Pi. Right. Uh, Yet another use for the Anchor 6000 milliamp hour external battery. These are really nice. Um, and we keep using these for more and more strange and wonderful things. But in any case, you now have a pirate box that you can go and deliver your legally traded files to other people. So now I actually want to take this, either one of these, connected to the giant portable external power battery pack that we built a couple weeks ago, and we can have like hundreds of hours of pirate boxing in a field somewhere. Field party. I guess in a field it wouldn't be weird, but okay. taking that into a mall, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, speaking of being beaten <laughs> down by mall security. Um, this is really cool though, actually. I'm excited about this. Yeah, thank you, Germany. Thank you, Germany. <laughs> well, thank you, Pirate Box Code people. Thank you, PirateBox.de. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the place to go to get that. If you want to get more, die trying. Go to youtube.com slash die trying or die trying, D I Y T R Y I N dot com. Or you can email us, die trying at revision3.com. We're on Twitter, die trying. We're everywhere. We're even behind you right now. Don't look. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Michael Hand. We'll see you next week on Die Trying. Ah! <laughs> Come on, do it. You can do it. <laughs> no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really good. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. That hurt a lot. <laughs>
my ribs. 